Alrighty guys, we are here in the Rec Tech office, our headquarters, and um, I thought we're going to start doing a new video series here on YouTube of all the problems that we work through with cars uh, for all of our clients that we uh, work for. So a lot of what we do is uh, automotive technology, which includes um, uh, pre and post scanning for some collision repair facilities. Um, uh, diagnostics of issues that the collision repair facilities may have, um, also advising on the specific OEM requirements that um, they might need to follow or keep in consideration when they're doing the collision repair, um, as well as calibration, module programming, and um, all the above. So pretty much anything that has to do with the electronic systems on the cars and uh, computer systems, modules, um, and, uh, the ADOS system, so adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot monitors. Um, nowadays, body shops are hitting this stuff more and more and more. So that's a lot of what we do. Anyway, um, so this is going to be the first episode of that series. And um, in specific, uh, the shop is working on this 2019 Subaru Outback. And this has been a massive job for them. It was, I believe, it was a recovered theft vehicle where somebody just stole it and uh, drove it like they stole it and drove it off road and messed it all up inside and outside and it was really close to a total loss but the insurance company wanted them to uh, repair it so they got all the way through with the repairs and they're doing the test drives and they come across uh, a code for the eyesight on the Subaru and um, so they figure okay well I guess it needs a calibration so we come into the shop and we begin our calibration process and uh, this thing was just fighting us and I thought it might be the target or the setup or whatever it might be, um, but it was not. Uh, it looks like that the people that were driving it off-road or doing whatever they were doing with it got the camera really dirty. There was dust in the camera. So after visually inspecting the camera, we made the determination that the camera was in fact bad and needed to be replaced. Um, I'm going to show you guys on the scanner and in the calibration bay. Um, exactly what code that's throwing. So if anyone is fighting this issue on a Subaru EyeSight calibration, this might help point you in the right direction. Then we're gonna replace that camera and we're going to complete the calibration, so. Right, so here we are in the calibration bay here and um, we're just gonna go over real quick. I'm gonna uh, probably put some screenshots in the video here to show you guys the specific uh, faults that we're getting from the camera when we go to calibrate. Um, but just to give a little context, this is our Subaru Outback here. You can see it is equipped with the EyeSight. And um, we did, you know, look through the windshield and inspect the cameras. That's when we noticed there was some dust on them. So we actually went inside the car and uh, with very light air pressure, blew the lens of the camera off and tried to clean it, even though that's not really something that's supposed to work and it didn't work. Um, but we did visually inspect it and there was dust on it and uh, took the cover off of it and looked it all around it and I guess this car was just filled with dirt at some point from being driven off road um, by whoever stole it and uh, yeah so we're gonna hop in here I'm gonna show you how we set the calibration frame up and um, uh, show you the error code that we're getting so the tools we're using here uh, we are using Autel we do have access to OEM equipment when it is necessary actually you can see here this code says stereo camera adjustment not completed. That's because when we went to do the calibration, it failed. So it is gonna throw this code and the eyesight will not be operational until the calibration is completed successfully. The calibration unit that we're working with is also Autel. Again, we have the OEM tooling when we need it, but um, the target is exactly the same. And uh, in my humble opinion, the um, the positioning of this Autel unit is way more accurate than even the Subaru uh, OEM procedures uh, give out because you're working with uh, these cameras here that shoot at the targets on the wheels back there and uh, it gives you a measurement on the screen of the scanner and it tells you exactly how to position that so that you're level and perpendicular to the car. So we're going to come back to the scanner here and go into our ADAS calibration is an outback. Now what it's going to want us to do is a fault scan on all the ADAS systems on the car before we're able to calibrate. As you can see here they want you to hold two of the ADAS system off buttons while pushing OK. This can be a little difficult for me to do so 
while holding the camera. If you look down here, you got the two that we want to push right here. So I'm going to hold those and push OK at the same time. We're in now. It wants to know why are you calibrating the lane camera calibration. This is mostly for reporting purposes. It'll put this on the report at the end. So um, we will have replaced the stereo camera, but not yet. We do have a DTC indicating calibration is required. Okay. Wants to know if our car's on alignment rack or on level ground. Level ground. Then it tells you all the supplies that you're going to need, which I have most of that gathered up already. The frame here, it has many adjustments. Uh, it has leveling feet on it, so you can make sure that everything's level. It has a side to side adjustment, so you can move the target side to side, make sure it is in line with the center line of the vehicle. And then it has this angle adjustment here where you turn this knob and it will adjust the tilt of the target. So right now it wants us to make sure all of these are dead center, which they are. Next up, wants us to put the calibration frame with the laser generally in the middle of the vehicle, but you can see my laser is right there. I know about the distance it needs to be and it wants us to plug the cameras in and turn them on. Now it wants us to put the targets on the back wheels. A little close up of that action here. We have those clamped just like your typical alignment system would be. And it wants us to put this distance thing at the front wheel. So the purpose for our uh, target that goes at the center of the front wheel here is to measure the distance from the target to where it wants to be measured on the vehicle. And the interesting thing is what I always do is I check the OEM service procedures, even if the Autel scanner is telling me everything to do because it's not always 100% accurate. And uh, one interesting thing you'll find is that the OEM procedures on this vehicle tell you to measure from the center of the front wheel to the calibration frame. set the height of the target so we have this uh, ruler here and the scanner is telling us it wants it at 1219 okay this is the main um, code that we're getting as a code here accuracy rate 65% no good um, we've also got axis misalignment codes we have got no distance inspection codes no good um, camera inspection result is abnormal card 1303 so you can take that code and go over to the um, service manual on the computer, which I can go show you guys and look up the symptom for what might be throwing that code. Alrighty, at this point we are in the car ready to replace the camera. So it's gonna be hard for me to work with both hands and film what I'm doing. So I'm gonna have to get the cover off here and then I'll jump in there and show you guys what's going on. Uh, we do have the battery disconnected at this point. Alrighty, simple enough. The cover just pulls right off of there. Essentially, you gotta use a little bit of force. Can't be too scared, you gotta uh, really tug on it to get it off there but here's our camera module uh, a couple precautions when you're working with one of these first of all if you are not replacing it uh, regardless of the circumstance you don't want to use an impact driver on these or really any any type of power tool whatsoever they are so sensitive um, if you go ratcheting on a little nut like this it could cause vibrations in there and it could screw the whole uh, camera up so you just want to use hand tools when you're working on these. Here is our new module box. What do we got here? Part number for this 2019 Outback 87501AL110. $2,000 for this uh, camera module. Um, so if you got a Subaru and you like going off road, you better keep your windows up and the air on recirc and keep that dust out of the car. she is you can see how seriously they take that they ship with these covers over them so they don't get dust or a lens scratch or anything weird like that so I take this in the car and put it in before I drop it heads up guys you see how there are two plugs on these each one they got two plugs only one wire in the car so if you're scratching your head thinking you forgot to plug something in or you lost a little wire squiggled away from you um, don't worry about it. That must be for 
uploading module programming from the factory into it or um, some other function that's necessary for that. So, Alrighty, we're gonna get this thing installed up in here now. Okay, she's in now. Don't forget to plug her in. And don't forget to take your covers off. I wanted to wait on that until I had it installed so I didn't accidentally fingerprint them. Alrighty guys, first thing, uh, we got the new camera installed. So you don't just install it and calibrate it. You have to upload the model data to, to the uh, module. So well, I'm pretty sure that the Autel can handle that. I'm a little more comfortable with the OEM tool. I know exactly how to do it with the OEM tool and I've had success with it with the OEM tool and I want to take a chance with such an expensive part. Um, so we're just gonna go that route with it since I have it available to me. So we've got a tough book in here um, that has five different hard drives in it. Uh, and the reason we have five different hard drives is it's best to run one um, software on each hard drive or else they'll start interfering with each other and, and have problems. So right here we are in our Subaru hard drive. So we're gonna go to Subaru Select Monitor 4. Software that I have subscribed yearly to to make sure we satisfy our clients. Hit diagnosis. We are all plugged into the car with the specific Need. You can see I have the battery maintainer on. All right, we are talking to the car officially now. So first thing we're doing is run a scan on the whole car. Might have popped a code when we disconnected the battery. We might have popped a code when we put the new camera in. It's definitely gonna have a code that the camera is not programmed and not calibrated. And the first thing we're gonna have to do is uh, program it, upload the, the model information for the car. Come over here with me, passenger side of the car on the Subaru. Open the door, and down below, right here, there's a label. It's got information on it, color code, trim code, option code. So that's the information that we're gonna need to input uh, to the computer so it can upload the proper parameters on we the car. We are still communicating on the pre-scan of the car. So this is a big reason. If you take a look at this whole giant setup that we have here. Look, OEM tools are, they're more cumbersome, they're slower. They're harder to use, they're expensive, and consequently, the uh, most cars don't get scanned with an OEM tool. Um, that's why some of these aftermarket scan tools are so popular is because they're easy, they're more affordable. Um, I still have quite a bit invested in my aftermarket equipment, but they're more affordable, they cover a broader range of cars, and uh, they're easier to figure out, and they're, they're pretty capable. So, you know, in my opinion, a, a professional in, in my field should have a good mix of both. They should know their market, they should know their niche, and they should have the OEM tools to service that when they need them. And uh, they should have the aftermarket tools for the other 98% of the time. So we are done talking to the car here. You can see that uh, we have an extra code popped up, vehicle model judgment. Um, and this is the same existing code. So the vehicle model judgment code is just that the camera's not programmed to this model vehicle. So. We are going to hop over here where it says each system. So we clicked each system for the diagnostic area. It brings up all our modules and you can go into each one and you can monitor data from here or you can go into each one and uh, program or calibrate things from here. So we're gonna click EyeSight and we need to do the same thing that the Autel was telling us to do. I need to go push those two buttons, hold them while I push next so that we can actually access the system. All right, we're in. So we're gonna go to work support. And here we have all of our options. The one we're looking for to program is, and it, it's kind of hard to understand this stuff because remember Subaru is a Japanese company and when you're working with this OEM tool, um, some of the English is different than we're used to hearing from the translation aspect of it. So you're looking at selection of parameter is what we want to do to upload the um, model registration information. As you can see, execute writing of vehicle model registration information. So you can now see here that we, it has asked, it says press OK after input applied model. So I clicked input and then I went and looked at the picture I took of that tag in the door and found the model. Um, and it should be the same amount of digits that it gives you here. So you input that and you push OK. And then OK. Now it wants us to put the four digit OP code. So we're going to input that next. 
Okay, now that we have the model information input, we are moving on to the adjustment dash inspection mode or the calibration of the front camera. So uh, you can see we just clicked here, camera all adjustment mode, accuracy rate 98%. Camera inspection has been completed normally. Okay guys, so that settles this one. Um, as you can see, we didn't move the car, we didn't move the target. We set it up previous to replacing the camera and we shot it so that I could uh, demonstrate to you that um, that failed reading that we were getting from the calibration. Left the car in the same spot, left the target in the same spot, replaced the camera, programmed the camera, calibrated the camera and it almost had 100% accuracy, which uh, goes to show the accuracy of the setup of this target because when I was setting them without the cameras before it was common to get around 90% and then you go do the on-road uh, automatic adjustment and it fine-tunes it in which we're going to do with this car too but um, at 98 99 sometimes 100% with the uh, new Autel cameras that are on here uh, that's a pretty accurate and documentable way of doing that so I'm really stoked that we're able to get this car fixed up um, for the shop here and um, that, that'll be the end of this series. Uh, I hope it helped you guys. If you have any questions or stuff that you need help with or um, stuff you wanna see videos on, put it in the comments below and we will try and get that out to you. See you next time.